Yeah? Okay, so the talk that you've just heard um, is a shortened example of the talk that we've given over 70 times around the UK in the last six months, building up to the actions that we've just seen in London. And I think that talk and the fact that we went to local community centres, we went to festivals, we went to churches and other religious places, and gave that talk in person with groups of 10, 20, 30, eventually kind of 60, 100 people, is a key part of the human nature and the human approach to our Extinction Rebellion campaign, which I think has given it a lot of the success that we've seen. So about six months ago, 10 core coordinators started working towards this and planning that program of outreach. And by the time I joined, about two months ago, um, I was put in charge of integrating the people that had signed up from our talks. So everyone who signed up willing to help from our talks got a personal phone call. And that phone call offered them either to get involved in the direct action side of our campaign, where they would be invited to a skills training session, or to get involved in the working groups where we had groups doing coordination, groups planning our media, groups making our art materials, doing our design work. So there was different ways for people to get involved in the campaign, but they weren't just expected to find that on their own. We actually were giving them personal integration calls, following up after the talks. Um, so at that point, our database that I was responsible for had about 500 people on it. Now, within the last month, we had our first big action. And after that action, our Facebook page and our database expanded by about 6,000 people in one day. And over the last month where we've had several weeks of action, we now have um, about 40,000 people on our Facebook page, I think. And we have groups starting in many different countries around the world, um, in both Europe and Africa and North America um, and some other continents as well. So the other part of that human approach to our campaign is that Extinction Rebellion is not targeting any individual people. It's not targeting a politician. It's not targeting the climate criminals that, or so-called climate criminals. It's not targeting any individual corporation. Um, what we're saying is that this, what is happening is we are about to face a potential extinction of our species and all life on this planet. And this is going to affect everyone. And so we need everyone to be involved in this and to be thinking about this together. So instead of um, targeting individual people, we're saying that we need a system change. And I think that kind of messaging is a key part that's allowed a lot of people to get involved in this. We're not kind of discriminating based on your political affiliations. We're not discriminating on um, your kind of economic beliefs. This, this kind of wide messaging that this is everyone's problem and we all need to come together, I think has led to the success that we've had. And so this is an experimentation. Over the last month we've seen a whole different range of actions and I'll run through them um, in a minute and then we'll have some time for some questions. But this is an experiment of what kind of system can we create as a movement to um, call for a system change. We're not here preaching that we have the answers to solve climate change. Um, we're not telling people how to solve it. What we're saying is that um, our government needs to divert the funding and set up a new system that can actually come up with the solution with expertise from scientists, economists, everyone that they need help from. They can come up with a new solution to climate change. So. Um, yeah, I think that's another key part of how we're saying everyone can get on board with this. So, our campaign is based on non-violent civil disobedience. And um, Niels just went through a few of the kind of historical examples of, that we've been drawing from for that. So what we want to do is change the climate activism culture initially in the UK, and now we're looking at um, communicating with groups internationally, learning how we can support international groups and how they can take support from us and learn from what we've done in London and the UK. So we're shifting from kind of individual pro protests, one-off protests, 
and small direct actions that use a small number of activists and looking to create a mass protest situation with mass arrests happening. We've also been asking in our talks for people to consider whether they would be willing to give up their freedom and go to prison. Because we've seen in the past, when people show that they're willing to give up their freedom, you create um, a mass media campaign and you can get a lot more people on board in your campaign. So far, the police in the UK have been very aware that we're trying to disrupt the justice system, that we're trying to get people arrested, that we're trying to get people put on remand in prison. And they've responded to that by making it very hard for people to get arrested. And they haven't put anyone in prison in our map of action. So that's somewhere where the experiment didn't work. Um, the group that kind of formed this campaign in the past um, did get some people in prison on remand when they were mo working on a much smaller campaign around air pollution. Um, but so far, the police have been kind of very tentative with making arrests. They, they know that it's going to increase our like, publicity if they make visible arrests and things like that. Um, and our focus of this, again, is not on corporations. We're focused on government buildings and we're focused on asking the government to create this new system. So, the messaging. We've used this extinction symbol that you can see on our banner and posters. This extinction symbol was designed quite a few years ago and many groups have used it. It's a symbol to recognize all of the species that have already gone extinct and to remember them and to also make people think about the species that we're going to lose and the potential extinction of humans. So it's a powerful symbol and we've used that as our logo with permission of the designer. And we've had a design team work with us to create messaging which is simple and targeted again at everyone. We're not focusing on the left or the right wing. We're focusing, we've been focusing in the UK on what we call Middle England. Just people who aren't necessarily affiliated with a political party, that have a family to keep, that are worried about the rising food prices that they might face that are worried about the future of their children, their grandchildren, and that would want to get on board with this and might not have been on the protest before. And then the other part of our messaging is that we declared a rebellion against the government. This is not a protest on a Saturday that's going to be one protest and then we all go home and forget about it. This is not going to be a small group of people taking direct action at one site. This is a mass non-violent campaign of civil disobedience where we have repeated actions day after day, month after month, where people are autonomously taking actions in their communities and also coming together in London or the centre of wherever your um, politicians sit in your country or in your community and creating disruption there. So, um, I'll go through some of the actions. 